appears to be self-evident. That all men are created. As a member of Congress, I get to have a lot of really interesting people in the office. Experts on what they're talking about. This is the podcast. For insights into the issues. China, bioterrorism, Medicare for all. In-depth discussions. Breaking it down into simple terms. We hold. We hold. We hold these truths. We hold these truths. With Dan Crenshaw. The eagle has landed. What's up, y'all? I want to give you a uh, lighthearted episode. Maybe we'll get into some serious policy stuff, but, you know, we're getting around the holidays and um, maybe you don't always want to hear about just politics and who's yelling at who. Um, So I want to talk to you about a really important thing, which is Top Gun Maverick. (laughs) That's right. And um, I've been wanting to do this podcast for a while, actually. Um, And I've got a good friend of mine, Mike Garcia, a congressman from California, and uh, turns out he was a Navy pilot. Mike, thanks for being on the Thanks show. for having me, Dan. Yeah, this is a fun one. Appreciate All right. it. right, this is going to be good, man. Um, I saw Top Gun three times. Okay, That's pretty was, impressive, was, you yeah, know. And for, I, it's for, hard that's, to admit. that's you showing me your soft underbelly, right? Your, your love of <laughs> naval aviation and naval aviators. So. Really I've only seen movie. it twice no, myself. So yeah, I mean, it, it shows, it's hard for me to admit that. It's good it's coming from, yeah. a, from yeah, a SEAL. Yeah. Um, and I, I gotta say, like, I don't even really watch SEAL movies, the, the serious ones especially. Yeah, yeah. I'll be honest, because they're a little hard yeah, to watch. Yeah, it's hard to watch, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, they're always dying. Yeah, like in every, Lone Survivor. Yeah, so, Lone, so, I mean, so, uh, Zero Dark Thirty was pretty awesome. Yeah, but, right. Yeah, there's no, but yeah, Lone Survivor's hard to watch. Yeah, it's, yeah. They, they did a good job with it. They did almost too good of a job. Yeah, they did that, too right? good of a yeah, job yeah, with yeah, it. Yeah, um, yeah. it. It felt really real. And, um, I haven't even gotten to the terminal list. I got through like the first episode, yeah. and it's, you know, I don't know. It's you live you live that life. Yeah, it's you, like you show that it's a funeral you've seen scene. Seen the dark side of it all. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, so it's and it's not okay. Well, anyway, yeah. we wanted to have a lighthearted conversation. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I liked Top Gun. I think everybody liked Top Gun. It was um, it was just a good all American movie. It's I, I don't know if this is true, but it seemed like it made so much money. It's got to be like the highest grossing of all. I think time. it's doing as good as they had hoped, at least. And uh, yeah, I think uh, they got their ROI on it for sure. So okay, very so, good. But yeah. you know a lot about Navy pilot stuff. Um, yeah. Okay, well, well, actually, give me some come background on that. How many years were you in? Were you at Top Gun? So I never went to Top Gun uh, per se as an instructor or as a student. There, we would go through workups and go up to Fallon. Yeah. By the way, Top Gun is now in Fallon, which is like the armpit of Nevada. It's yeah. not Miramar. I mean, that's, that's your which opinion. Is, uh, yeah, that's, that's, my, that's opinion. my opinion. Others yeah. might suggest it's in uh, San I'm sure Diego some and people, Miramar, the way the movie portrays it. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's we'll, not, we'll agree to disagree. It's not as nice as uh, <laughs> the movie makes it sound or look. But uh, yeah, so I, I went in uh, I, through the Naval Academy in 94 to 98 and then flight school in 2000. Uh, got to the fleet shortly after flight school and... Uh, I was on active duty until 09, and then I did three years as a reservist, as an instructor pilot uh, for three years What'd as a reservist. Uh, the F-18, so the, 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 the plane in the movie. Um, yeah. And if you recall, there was a single seat version and then a two yes. seat. Yes. I flew the single seat version um, primarily, about 90% of my time. All of my deployments were What's the in difference? a single why, seat. Why, is, why are some, is it both, there's different uh, types of different F-18s. Yeah, the, the Super Hornet was meant to sp- have spiral upgrades with new sensors, new weapons, and to have an electronic attack mission, which is what we call the Growler now. Mm-hmm. Um, and so with that growth, they were thinking having two people in the cockpit w- it was was good. And sometimes one plus one does equal three, but if you've got the wrong personalities, mm-hmm. uh, you, you know, that one plus one can actually equal, you know, 1.5. Um, so there's a single seat version and the single seat, Pilots like myself and Jake Elsey, who's a good friend of ours serving in Congress, was in, actually in my squadron. Yeah, uh, we flew basically uh, solo, uh, you know, over Iraq and supporting guys like you on the ground when when they got into hairy uh, posi- positions on the ground. So, uh, just a, a fantastic job. It's as cool as it looks in the movies. Like everything that they do in the movies, um, it, it looks cooler on camera and from the ground. It, some of the mm-hmm. flying looks cooler, but you, you pinched yourself every day and just just blessed to be able to you know do what we did. It- um, it does look carrier cool. based. Yeah. It does look damn cool. Um, so I, how many, how many takeoffs landings from a carrier? So I think I have, uh, I mean, does that make us over, better than the air force? Oh yeah. And they, they realize that, you know, yeah, this is know. something, you know, know, Pfluger's an F-22 pilot, which was the best plane ever <laughs> another, made. Another Texas rep. But he, yeah. And he, another Texas guy, yeah, but he still bows like when, when yeah, LZ and I walk by, he still gives us respect. And he's so tall. So it's really obvious that he bows. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's kind of, it's embarrassing for him really. <laughs> I, I'm surprised he still does that after, after so long, but. Uh, yeah, landing on an aircraft carrier is special. I mean, there, you know, um, the, we actually, 
Uh, because we spend so much time training to land on the aircraft carrier, we're actually not as proficient at some of the air to air and air to ground missions that the Air Force is, for mm -hmm. instance. Um, and that pains me to say that as well. But what if but, you go to Top Gun? Uh, but if you go to Top Gun, yeah, that's what you do. You you know through the course you're spending literally months focusing only on tactics and strategy. Yeah. Uh, the guys that go through Top Gun ironically have a have a reputation for when they go back to the fleet, they they are the ones that screw up the administrative stuff, right? They're mm -hmm. the ones that uh, sometimes forget to lower their landing gear until they're you know getting ready to land right. or lower their hook because exactly. they haven't been in the fleet enough. But yeah. uh, but they're killers. They're you know they're they're like the Jedi's. They come back to the squadrons and, yeah. and, and, and teach the rest of us, right? So, yeah, um, I can see that. So, all right, let's 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 go through like the first question I had um, about this movie. So, Tom Cruise um, starts out the movie as a test pilot. Yep. Right? So, he's been in the Navy his, like forever. He should be an admiral by now. Yep. He still looks like he's 29, so it's yeah. fine because it's Tom Cruise. That guy. Yep. Some, something weird yep. going on there. Um, but he's a test pilot for this crazy new plane. Uh, okay, a couple things. Uh, is it ever realistic for someone to be flying? Um, he's a captain, I think. Yeah, he's a captain. Yeah, that's one of the jokes is he never made admiral, right? Yeah, uh, he's in 06. So, yeah. Is there any cap? Is, is that possible as a pilot? Yeah. Uh, so one of my best friends who's now, he was my roommate on the USS Nimitz, is now the commanding officer of the Nimitz. Uh, he's on deployment as a captain. Uh, okay. The air wing commanders are 06s as well. So uh, in the test uh, community, I'm not too sure. He was in the test community, mm -hmm. you know, and... and and testing that, yeah. that jet. Was well, in the movie, he was like star. relegated to it. Yeah, you know? it was like go like, off and do your own thing. Don't yeah. kill anyone. Don't yeah. kill your, yourself. And um, but yeah, so there are O sixes, and you know the the true fighter pilots long for that career where we're never told, hey, you got to go be in the Pentagon for two years. You got to go do you know uh, yeah. an IA somewhere for two years, whatever it is. Um, so there are a couple folks that uh, you know never grew up that end up flying yeah. planes their whole life. Um, so that's it's cool that it's possible because I mean, SEAL teams, yeah. it's not possible. I mean, yeah, you know, and maybe well, physically the demanding size. for you guys. I mean, well, yeah, I mean, if, well, it's an age thing for that's one reason, but yeah. it's, it's also a rank thing, especially as an officer. I mean, yeah, past 04 is very hard to see any reason why anybody would be on the ground um, yeah. on an op, you know, as an 05, but um, which yeah. is a commander. So okay, just for everyone. Um, the way we do officer ranks. When we say captain, that's an 06. That means yep. That's a pretty, that's a fairly high rank still. I mean, I when I was in ten years, I had just made 04 mm -hmm. by the end of it as a lieutenant commander. So mm -hmm. the next thing would be commander, and then captain. All right. Then he um then he's flying this really cool airplane uh, at Mach 10. Yeah. So like, what is that? How is that a uh, how fast is Mach 10? So I mean, at do we have pretty, any planes pretty, that go pretty damn fast. fast. If they, if we do, I'm not aware of them where they're classified. But uh, so to put that in perspective, the SR-71 that you know most people recognize as the fastest plane um, it was Mach three. Uh, there was an X-15, I believe it was called, that uh, Pete Knight, who actually was from my district uh, and flew the X-15. I think he got up to Mach four and a half or five at one point, yeah. and that was basically a rocket propelled jet, uh, yeah. you know, airplane. But uh, so Mach 10 would be special. That would be hypersonic range, mm -hmm. right? Ridiculous. And, uh, ridiculous range. So, okay. Um, yeah. So it takes some a little bit. Hollywood then, there. Yeah. And then he ejects. Yeah. And he lands. Actually, the scene after he ejects is a cafe that's like two miles from my house. So this is all filmed. Really? Most of this was filmed in my district. So really? The old uh, cafe. Uh, where, where's your district? The where's way district? station. Uh, Northern LA uh, County. So okay. this is Santa Clarita. Edwards Air Force Base is out near me, yeah. right? So... Uh, a lot of the aerospace and space records from early on uh, were actually in the high desert in my district. So, nice. uh, so this was set there kind of in the beginning. So, yeah, if you eject at Mach 10, unless you're in some sort of, you know, force uh, field, force field, some <laughs> like, giant, you know, uh, special material capsule, right? Uh, you're going to be basically bone fragments and amino acids by the time you hit the ground. And uh, so yeah. a little, little, you know, comical yeah, you know, I mean, if you, if you, like, so even what's the fastest you guys can eject? I mean, would it, like if you, there's a, there's a lot of ejections yeah. in the first. I've, I've heard of guys ejecting from Tomcats and Hornets uh, at like Mach 1.2, uh, and they come out pretty messed up. You're gonna you're gonna break uh, How fast your limbs is that? Miles, uh, per hour. miles per hour. Depending, you know, over the ground, it's probably uh, around 850, 800 to 900, depending on the altitude. Mm -hmm. Uh, over the ground so yeah. you know it's all relative to the airspace you know, the thinner the air the less yeah. force but um but yeah you're moving and the heat uh anything above usually 450 knots you're going to get uh wind burn on your on oh, your yeah. exposed skin you're going to break uh, an arm or a leg and 
Uh, it's a very violent, obviously, experience. Yeah. Well, I mean, so and just for people's reference, like I, I'm pretty sure the planes it was a typical skydiving plane slows down to, I think, what is terminal velocity around 120 miles an hour. It slows down That's quite right. a bit. Yeah, it does right. not feel violent when we jump out of the plane. Correct. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're basically trading forward speed for downhill mm-hmm. speed. Yeah, right. and that's why, by the way, uh, you don't feel that falling feeling. That's right. Yeah. People are always wondering, like, oh, God, is it going to feel like jumping off, like bungee jumping? It will not feel like bungee jumping. Right. You're already um, doing a buck twenty, and I'm yeah, just changing you're just, directions. Yeah. Um, By the way, my whole goal was to not ever to leave the plane, and so the fact that you actually willingly jumped out of the plane is uh, is is pretty impressive to me. You know, when we're ready, right? It's like the ride's over. Yeah, the ride's over. It's time to get out. It's time to get out. Let's yeah. Do something else. Let's yeah. Do something else. This is tiring. Yeah, <laughs> this is boring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, you would definitely vaporize at Mach 10. I mean, it's 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 crazy to think just jumping, you know, just jumping out of a car at a 30 miles an hour. Yeah, so, yeah, it'd be game over. So, but it's Tom Cruise. But he can so do he's anything. Different. He's doing all kinds of stunts now, and he's doing them all himself. So it's yeah, pretty impressive. Know. And like he flies too. So um, I think that last scene in the movie that's that that was I, as I understood it, that was a. Um, I don't know. They just kind of filmed it because it was fun. He was like, hey, let's oh, take... Oh, the Mustang, the P-51 Mustang. Yeah, let's take, yeah, let's yeah, take yeah. Uh, uh, Jennifer... What's, it, what's her name? Con- uh, Connelly. Con- Jennifer Connelly yeah, yeah. up in a flight and it made a pretty good end scene. But yeah, he yeah. flies those things. Yeah, yeah. Um, he wouldn't be able to do that on 06 pay. He wouldn't have the $3 million P-51. Is know? that what it, that is? Yeah. Yeah, they don't, they don't explain. Yeah. They leave yeah, a few yeah. things out. Maybe yeah. that's why he's... Enough. Maybe, it's a side gig. Yeah. He's got a side hustle going on. Yeah. You know, hey, it's Tom Cruise. Maybe it's, you know, whatever. Then it's some like aging uh, serum yeah, that, he, some that he gives he's, out. He's pushing on the side. Yeah. All right, so then we move on in the movie to um, Tom Cruise is is brought back to to teach a special mission. Yeah. Right. A few things about the special mission that I think are oh, like right off the top, like kind of ridiculous. That's okay. I still I just absolutely love the movie. It's just so much fun. To watch. By the way, when you walk into a briefing space and the dude from Mad Men is sitting at the end of the table. Yeah. You go, okay, something's going Pilots on. Pilots aren't here. that good looking, first of all. No, I seals mean, are. A not. few of us are, but not all, not all of us. Yeah, it's, it's an anomaly. Ham. Like, uh, it's John Ham. Yeah. Tom like, Cruise. Okay. Yeah. Something, something was, sideways here, right? It was a bit absurd. Fishy. Yeah. Um, I did like the, okay, so the bar, let's, like, that's, let's, let's wind back a little bit. The bar, yeah. the first bar scene, Tom Cruise walks back in, he sees Penny. Uh, what's her name? Benjamin. Penny Benjamin, right? Yep. There's a reference to her in the first movie. That's right. He's like, Which I thought he, was cool. He, he, got, was in, he cool. got in trouble with the Admiral's daughter, and then she's in the new love. Love connection. She's also um, doesn't age, right? No, no. good for her. Um, Which, by the way, he made all the right moves, and if if you know that's what was going on, then good on him. Yeah, as I mean, a young lieutenant, that was that was either right. That's, that's what you. That's what. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I won't say the next thing I'm about to say, uh, but, but um, the uh, the bar is supposed to be like the O Club. Right? right. Yeah. That's what we call yeah. it. Yeah, so you can yeah, say. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We don't have those. So Oh really? Yeah. No, there's there's not even there's not really like a wardroom. Like yeah, so, no so the SEAL team so like, yeah. okay, now we gotta back up. What's that bar in Coronado that you guys all hang out at? That's Danny's. But okay. but I'm yeah. saying there's no separation between enlisted and officers. Oh, yeah. There's okay. just okay. none. Yeah, yeah. So it's all we all just hang out together. Um there's on a ship, just so everybody understands what we're talking about. Um, they, almost everywhere outside the SEAL teams in the Navy, there are, is a wardroom. And the wardroom is both um, a real place and a, and a sort of metaphysical place, right? Mm-hmm. You, when you say the wardroom, you're actually just talking about the officers at the command. Right. But right. you could also be talking about the literal wardroom. Right. Um, we don't really use the word very much. Um, we, and we definitely don't have a wardroom. Now, there is a chief's mess. The chiefs definitely have their thing. Yeah, they're chiefs. And they're, that's right. Yeah. They can do whatever the hell they want. Right. Um, but on a ship, there's an actual wardroom with like yeah. nice leather chairs and things. Yeah. It's, it's nice. Um, there is nothing like that. So the O Club is an officer's club. Right. I mean, yeah. I, I on base, think, on when, you're base on a, yeah. when you're on a shore command, so uh, Miramar, you know, North Island, Lemoore, Virginia Beach, they have an officer's club. And there's also an enlisted club, and then there's a chief's club. Yeah. So what it does is it allows the officers, the, the pilots in this case, to, you know, have fun and, and screw around without, you know, doing that in front of the troops, basically. Have you been to the one on North Island? Uh, I have, yeah. So that's where this one's based. Like this, this movie. This is one's supposedly, supposed to be. In, it's on North yeah, Island. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and it looks like North Island. It looks like they. It's hard to tell exactly where they filmed it. It could have been. I could have. I could maybe think I saw Point Loma in the background. Yeah, yeah. There's some that scenes was, that are definitely San Diego area. Yep. And um, I don't know if you remember that Oak Club, but I've been to that Oak Club a couple of times. And yeah. They did a pretty good job. They did. making it seem like it's the same place. All the memorabilia Inside. on the wall, the yeah. coins everywhere, the, like the bell behind the bar. So. 
Uh, again, it's that, not on the beach. Though. It's not a cabin on the beach the way. They no, it's never. Right, it's usually an asbestos, cool it asbestos filled. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're not supposed to drink the water from yeah. the fountain. Kind yeah, of, usually. Kind of this the one on the fountain. Condemned. Nice. The one yeah. on our fountain. Is, it's like attached to some other random building. <laughs> like if I recall, and it, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's kind of weird how yeah, yeah. it is. But North not, Island's pretty nice. Yeah, I come from Lemoore Naval Air Station, which was uh, which was not so nice. But yeah, uh, yeah. But uh, oh, I spent ten years in Coronado, like where this building is based. So yeah, that's it's it's a rough life. It's um, tough. You I know, know. You, guys, yeah. you guys made a, a sacrifice. A lot of that. gang activity in Coronado. Yeah. <laughs> you got, you got to real, be careful. <laughs> All those white collar gangs at. rolling around. Yeah. 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 Money laundering gangs yeah. rolling around. Yeah. It's wild. Yeah. Okay. Just kidding, everybody. Um, well, actually, there's a. There's probably. Some. There's, there's probably, not there's probably in yeah. Coronado, but south. There's um, there are probably some cartel uh, like escapees. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, for buy, sure. Buy a lot of homes. Anyway. Yeah. Um, that's a whole separate subject. Okay, so the oh, we got the we got that scene out of the way. That, that's yeah. actually that's pretty real, and I think it's realistic how they kind of operate. I mean, they, look, there's a lot of swagger in the movie, but yeah, the personalities. The biggest thing uh, that the first movie did right was the camaraderie and the personalities. They really they really nailed the the you know besides the shower scene and the volleyball scene. Mm-hmm. That you guys those things do that. don't happen. Oh, so we actually do. We definitely do shirtless volleyball. Well, yeah, and, and you guys are known as for that. much as possible. Yeah, I think they leverage the SEAL community you know, yeah. for certain elements. We don't wear jeans though. No, just speedos. Oh, it's usually just speedos and you know oh. whatever whatever's laying around. <laughs> Tell right. Okay, we're not pilots. Hold on. We're not all <laughs> ghillie suits. Yeah, and all, volleyball and ghillie suits. Yeah. yeah, all kinds of things. But uh, they did nail the personalities. This one was a. I don't think the the characters were as developed as well as the first movie. Yeah. Tom Cruise was the way yeah. they Tom Cruise's character, but he is that character for you know what mm-hmm. forty years now, right? Whatever yeah. the numbers. So, um, but the bar scene and then the flying was phenomenal. Um, and um, yeah. uh, Goose's son, I'm forgetting, forgetting over his name. What was his call sign? In the yeah, movie? Rooster. 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 Yeah, no, Maybe for... developed okay because yeah, we know him. That was good. Yeah, you got the backstory. There was more focus on him. Um, but you're right. So, nobody yeah, else was developed. The others were sort of underdeveloped a little bit. Yeah, yeah. in my opinion. But uh, yeah, not. And maybe the, the fleets changed a little bit. Maybe that is the new personality. But uh, yeah, well, they're, they're all cocky. They're all like you know. Top that part's class, true. Top yeah, yeah. 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 You, you walk into a room of alpha, you know, male and females, and uh, yeah. you know, there's some of us are more humble than others, and then. Uh, uh, but you know, in the end, uh, you know, it's just like your community, you're putting your life on the line every day yeah. and we would go out and fly and then, you know, uh, kind of talk trash to each other. And then we'd go play Xbox, uh, for yeah. a couple hours on the, on the aircraft carrier and they were just your brothers. Uh, just what you, know, you do. So just what you did. And so they all get called into this special mission, which by all, you know, if we're inferring what country this is supposed to be, seems like it's Yeah. Iran. You can't say China, whatever you, was whatever. It, what do you think? What do you think it was China or not? Uh, no, it can't. It can't yeah, be I don't China. know. It, it wasn't it's, China. It wasn't. It definitely it wasn't China because yeah, they went out of their way to make nuclear. sure they already have nuclear weapons. Yeah, this, yeah. Is, this is like a nuclear weapons. Problem yeah, it was probably supposed like to be a North, North Iran area, yeah. you know, landscape. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. it's, it's it can be snowy and mountainous up yeah, there. Yeah, so, yeah. and then we have access to the Persian Gulf, which yeah. is where we were, which is where we launched from. Right. All right. And so in the movie, this is now we're getting some meat potatoes here. So the premise here is that the only way to destroy this particular site is with this crazy mission. Yeah. And I right. was like, I did have the question of like, you know, we have like really accurate yeah. missiles. Yeah. There's can a lot just, of assets we could Can we just do that? All right. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Maybe there was so the conspiracy. Really say why. I think the, the why it, is to get rid of Maverick. I mean, man, this is like the grand, after 30 years or finally like, Let's just con- concoct this just terrible concoct scenario. Crazy mission he's going to want to do it because no one can, and you know we're going to kill Maverick. This is how we're going okay. to happen. But uh, he, he pulled through. Yeah, they didn't, they but yeah, there's other ways. You, you use, you, 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 there's all sorts of missiles you can use to do standoff. Yeah. The problem with those is uh, there would be a larger sort of geopolitical event because of that. Whereas if you're sneaking a four ship of Hornets under the radar and. Something just explodes, you know, randomly in the but middle of the But they sent a bunch of tomahawks before the they mission. They do launch tomahawks. So they had, why not program one of those tomahawks uh, yeah. uh, for <laughs> it's just, it's six other miles thing. later to hit that thing? Well, and also, uh, they probably should have had some of those tomahawks target the SAM sites. Also, valid point. Like, that yeah. just seems like yeah. the first thing I would have, like, yeah. hey, oh, these SAM sites are going to kill you. Yeah. Should we blow them up? Yeah. I mean, that would yeah, be yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. 
You can't give all the credit, you know. You can't give the surface warfare guys all the good kills because then you got nothing. To, <laughs> as a naval aviator, you got nothing to do, right? Is there any way that you would? So remember the scene where they're like they they leave the carrier, the yeah. only four only four planes, mm-hmm. and then all the tomahawks just go right over their heads and they that, see them. Is that accurate? Because so I mean, that that relative velocity, I think you could probably see them. Right? Yeah, yeah. They and they uh, normally what would happen is they'd be underneath you, right? So you'd get you'd get in, Not in the, but they got to be in this radar. Way, these, guys are, these guys are so low that the tomahawks are actually radar. above them. Yeah, it's because of the radar. Because of the radar, yeah. Is that real? This is, uh, to a, yeah, to a certain point. They don't, their radar is like, because I think our radar would probably pick up a freaking plane. Some sensors will pick up lower than others. If you're down at 50 feet, most things won't, aren't going to track you until really? you're literally, you know, within a couple miles of it. Um, okay. The eyeball becomes the primary, you know, sensor to the, to really? the shooter. So, so there, do you guys uh, train a lot then? For so like we do, we do, do we do low levels. The problem with low levels is, uh, you know, a man portable air defense system or like a shoulder fired stinger missile, the equivalent of that can shoot you down once the guy yeah. sees you, right? So you you're could like extremely you could literally throw a rock up and boom. Yeah, like a kid with a slingshot can, can end engines. your flight. Yeah, so, so that, that could be. You a don't want to do that. Fast. So this is a real niche mission, basically, yeah. right? You got to go down low. Uh, you got to go against uh, double digit SAMs, long range SAMs, and then short range SAMs, mm-hmm. surface to air missiles. And then you've got to do this exotic pop up maneuver and then dive yeah. into the, the hole, right? Which looks like yeah. a giant pimple on, on the Earth's surface. And uh, the theory is that maybe the other stuff can't get into. Yeah, that's what I was It's like say. that little three foot um, or three meter hole in the Death Star, right? right. That's right. really all this is, is Empire Strikes Back, if you think about it. That's exactly what it is. I mean, Not yeah. Sure. I never really thought about it. I think it we just way. ruined Top Gun. Well, did I mean, it ruin it or did it make it did, it? did it finally explain it? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe we just enlightened. Think, we yeah. enlightened. We just elucidated. Because it is. It does drive me a little crazy. I'm like, why? Yeah, why? It, when we I, I, because I'm not exactly sure of the mechanics of, of of how we might send like a, a tomahawk or something. Can they, maybe they can't dive that way? But I have a feeling well, they the, can. Well, the one of the arguments is the tomahawk is. It's not that fast, and it has a big radar crossing entry, so you can shoot a tomahawk missile down pretty mm-hmm. quickly, right? So, yeah. but, but if you're shooting tomahawks into a, into another country's borders, mm-hmm. the quantity doesn't matter, right? So yeah. theoretically, just you just keep going. keep keep going. You make it rain longer than they can. Really water. a special kind of, of warhead. It that only, like, only I think you had to get in that, that three F-18. meter portal in the Death Star, yeah. and only you know in Empire, only Luke could do that, and only, in the movies, only Maverick, Maverick could do it. Yeah. Yep. All so, right. Yeah. Well, okay. So we solved that problem. Um, what about the flight mechanics? I mean, I mean, obviously they're, they're not giving you exactly what the route is, right? But I mean, what do you think about generally flying the route that, like, the big part of the movie is based on on this on the challenge behind flying this particular right, right, route. Yeah. So in in naval aviation, there's there's two sort of criteria, right? There's the tactical grading criteria, and then there's style points. Mm-hmm. So I, you know, we always would go for the style points where you go down as low and in the deepest canyon you can find, surrounded by the most missiles. Uh, and that's all they did here, right? There was probably easier ways to get to the target, easy, better weapons. And, no, it's but impossible. This is, <laughs> it's it the cannot be done. I have to go down that and, canyon. And, and like we know the mission has to be flown in two and a half minutes. They're like, yeah, yeah. remember There's they no raised it at some yeah. point in the, in the plot, like it can't be done. Let's just raise it to four minutes. And they're like, no, you'll die. We'll die, you'll die. Like, for sure. Let's go faster. <laughs> no, you'll die. You'll black out. Uh, so you either black out or get shot down. Then you have to be two and a half minutes. Yeah, right like, it's, so, it's yeah. like the, I, yeah. So that's another kind of unrealistic part. There's no way that we know with such certainty. Right. Really, any mission parameters that, and this is a typical thing in the movies. Like they, it's always the big mission. It always comes from the top down, which is probably how you guys get missions. Right. But it's certainly not how we get missions. Right. We're the yeah. ones who create the missions. Yeah. Generally speaking. That's right. No, we would get um, fragged with. In orders, very few yeah. cases, like there's obviously cases where that's not true, but to the extent that it is, it only really happens with JSOC, with you know SEAL Team Six and Delta. Like they might get a national level mission where because it's a hostage rescue because it's you know it's the it's the uh, the the Phillips rescue and right, uh, yeah, off the coast yeah. of Somalia and yeah. Somali pirates. Like that's, that's kind of a, because we have people on standby for these kind of things. But for the most part, it is guys who develop relationships, gather intelligence and eventually build up a mission package. Like, Hey, we should do this. And then it gets approved up right, to the highest right, levels. Right. Um, anyway, just sometimes good to explain that. But in this case, it's a little different. This, this is in plausible. This, case, this, this is plausible. It's plausible. The other thing, when you're filming a movie, uh, speed, is hard to capture on film, right? So the lower you are, uh, the more relative motion and references sure. you have to the terrain. Oh yeah, uh, the faster it looks. And I and I think I can't. I haven't been able to prove this yet, but there's some scenes 
that look like they're running the speed, the film of the speed a little faster, like maybe 120%, 125% to, because it's very hard. And when I was uh, on active duty, uh, I would carry a camcorder. This is before, you know, the iPhone and, and yeah. GoPros, right? Uh, but but uh, I would ca carry a camcorder with me. And one of the most frustrating things was uh, yeah, you'd come back cool and it doesn't think. look as cool, right? Yeah. Uh, well, especially from the cockpit. Right. It's yeah. Not There's look no that fast motion. The but cockpit. even when you're down low and you're hauling ass doing, you know, 500 knots at 100 feet, it didn't look. Still didn't look as that, cool as you wanted that, to. That, that cool. Yeah, you got to put it probably down more, especially if you're facing forward. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so yeah. what we found, like we put a cruise video together. If you played a little faster, it represents what they see in real life, even though it's a little yeah. faster. So they, they probably did a little bit of that. But, but overall, I mean, it was all the scenes were real. The flying mm -hmm. scenes were real. My, my, one of my best friends, uh, uh, a guy named uh, Pops, call sign Pops. I won't say his name here. He was the commanding officer at Top Gun when they filmed it. So he flew most of the scenes that were back at home with, with you know, Tom Cruise in the back seat. Mm -hmm. And he would send me text messages going, dude, this is, this is the stuff we're doing is legit, you know? Yeah. And so they, they did it right. And, and, and I, I remember Tom Cruise talking about that. Like yeah. He wanted to pull the G's, wanted to make these people like the pilots experienced like the, it. Yeah. Boom, like yeah. the, you know, yeah. when you punch it and like what it feels like. Yeah, the cat launch and all that. So they did a good job. I almost wrote him a letter after watching it with my boys and, and uh, the family. I, I almost wrote him a letter saying, hey, I don't agree with your politics, your, you know, your spiritual uh, side at all or diametrically opposed. But I do appreciate what you did for naval aviation for, mm -hmm. for literally three yeah. or four generations yeah. now. You, you know, it helped inspire me and I think he's inspiring new naval aviators. I don't even know what Tom Cruise's politics are. I'm not, I mean, it's aside from the weird Scientology stuff, which he hasn't really yeah, talked about very, in a long time. I don't think he's really delved into politics. To yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't think he I don't is. know, yeah. That's a good question. I mean, I think we would. You should have him on your podcast. <laughs> I know, right? The real time, the real man. That'd be yeah. cool. He skydives a lot too. He does do that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it, like the, the Mission Impossible 3, maybe. It's the scene where it, it never cuts. I was inspired to do my own version of that when I jumped the Hanging forward. on the yeah. C-17? Is that, is that yeah. one? No, it, yeah, no, it's, it's, but they never cut away. The shot never cuts away. Yeah. And so they did this about a hundred times to get it right. He jumped really? out of that C-130 like a hundred times to get it right. Because it was a very difficult scene in the air. You're, if you recall, he's, he's with this other guy. And they're going to jump down into Paris and then do some off, yeah. right? Um, and so they're at 30,000 feet. They've got air, right? Cause you need, you need to, you need mm -hmm. air, uh, supply if you're jumping above like 15,000 yeah. really. And, um, one guy just whatever being weird, like grabs Tom Cruise's hose and like unseats it from his helmet. Okay. And so they're doing a lot of things wrong, like screwing around with each other. Yeah, <laughs> that's, not, that's not the kind of that's joke. Not the first, yeah. It's not like, a there's like good jokes and there's bad jokes. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's not a good joke. Um, <laughs> And then they're jumping into a storm. This is another yeah, like no. He's gonna no. ice up. There's gonna be an ice cube coming out of the cloud. Right. I mean, yeah. it's kind of ridiculous. Yeah. And and so the guy who you know Karma's a bitch. He grabs Tom Cruise's air supply and he falls through this storm cloud. Gets electrocuted and goes unconscious. <laughs> That's so not Tom funny. Cruise, I don't know. So how does this ridiculous? <laughs> I mean, so the scene is insane. Like you know, Tom Cruise like gets to him, and that's hard enough. Like you have to be yeah, a pretty yeah. experienced skydiver to even if somebody is free falling, just figuring out how to get to them. Yeah, that's to a fly, rendezvous. That's fly a to them. Problem. It's yeah. difficult. You got to know how to fly while you're falling, and there's ways to do it. We won't get into the details, but it takes practice, and then you and then you've kind of got the muscle memory, and it just works. But it's difficult. That's a lot of jumps to figure that. It's a lot of time in an air tunnel too. That's probably yeah. really how he learned it. Okay. Um, that's interesting. Yeah, because yeah. in an air tunnel, it's you, I don't want to make this a skydiving like lesson, but you're in free fall. When you jump out of an airplane, you need about a minute of free fall training. Okay. Okay. It's figuring out yeah. how to go up, down, forward, backward, super left, expensive, right? Yeah. yeah. It's just a, it's just very little time. Um, and in a wind tunnel, you can just sit in there for 15 minutes and mm. and figure out like, oh, okay, so my body does this, and then I move this way relative to other things. And that's representative of oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, it's it absolutely is. Okay. Cool. Um, Anyway, so Tom just to get to that guy and then flip him over, pull his rip cord, flip himself over. Like it, it's 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 not yeah. an easy scene. No, yeah, um, very cool scene, and it never cuts away. All right. Anyway, enough about Tom Cruise's movies. Um, you, should have, you should have him on. Should, yeah. Oh should yeah. Do well, it's yeah. weird. I just I keep calling him Tom Cruise, and he doesn't respond to me. Yeah, I don't know yeah. like, why. Call, well, he likes to be called Maverick. Well, not. I mean, I meant calling. I didn't mean calling him Tom Cruise. I mean. <laughs> I mean, it's just weird. They just don't get back to me. They don't, yeah, I mean, yeah, you keep like, going. You actually are physically calling. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like they just uh, they don't think I'm important. He doesn't know who you are. I mean, I don't get it. I don't get it. All right. Um, where are we on time? I good. I think, I think we're good. We're good. Okay. I got like 15 minutes. Okay. Um, 
the the other stuff that is real too, I think, is the way you would climb that mountain and the G's you would pull yeah. and the way they have to invert to yeah. get to the other side, that's right? right. Yeah. I've heard that that's pretty accurate. That's, that is legit. Uh, and this is why, to your point about seals, it's a young man's, young woman's sport. Um, for us, there's a point where your neck and back can't just do it anymore, right? And we would fly with, uh, it's not in the movie, I don't think, but we had a, a, a helmet-mounted sight, a helmet-mounted queuing system. Yeah. So we had this helmet that was... It's probably worth like 300 grand, um, just the helmet alone. But wherever we look, the sensors would look with yeah. us and we could literally target something just by looking at it, pushing a button on, on the stick. Uh, but that thing weighed a couple pounds. So when it's a couple inches off the forehead and a couple pounds and then you, you know, pull seven and a half G's, that two pound widget now weighs, you know, 16, 17 pounds as you're looking over your shoulder and, and you know, seeing if the bombs hit, yeah. if anyone's shooting at you. You do that a couple some, thousand times while you're workouts. training for ten years, and then you you know you, it's it really screws up your your back and neck. So, but yeah, that that G force is is real. And what happens is, you don't lose consciousness right away. You lose uh, the blood in your head. So it's, the blood leaves your head, and over time, if you pull hard enough, and if you don't do the right muscle uh, movements with your legs, the blood li- literally leaves your eyeballs, but your conscience, your conscious. So you Whoa, can you can't blind. see, but you're awake. So you just have the sensation of, um, I know so that's I'm where pulling. the blackout comes from. That's right. If you pull happening. hard enough, you eventually pass out. But um, um, so, yeah, they were probably pulling, you know, eight to nine G's. Our aircraft is actually limited to seven and a half G's, the F-18. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, you had to mention that in the movie, though. You had to override the, the limiter uh, to get to nine G's, which is what they do in the movie. And they say, hey, we're basically bending the airframe at this point. Um uh, and then on the backside, again, to stay low, they've got to pull that same amount of Gs. So, uh, yeah, it's a strenuous maneuver. I mean, it was cool to watch them because I've seen some of those ranges. I've flown, you know, some of those routes. And so, so to see that on, on, you know, on the big screen was pretty cool. All right. It seems like in every dogfight movie, uh, somebody's being chased. Right, and yeah. they, got, they got a lock, right? Somebody's somebody behind them yeah. is locked on. That's right. And then they just do like this air brake thing. And then they're behind the other. Yeah, thing. the Cobra maneuver or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, is yeah. that a thing? Uh, if, if it, I mean, a, so the reality in the real world is if you ever see the dude you're fighting, you've screwed something up, right? You're supposed to kill each other or kill the bad guy, you know, outside of double digit miles and you never yeah. actually are within visual range of each other. So when you come to a merge and you actually are visual with, with the bandit, mm-hmm. uh, you've already basically screwed up. Um, and so if you ever get to the point where the dude's literally right behind you, you've screwed up a lot. You've, you've mm-hmm. lost all your angles. You've lost your airspeed. You've probably lost, you know, some weapon advantage along the way. And um, so if the so, dude so is literally never, saddled be behind you. so close to you that that air brake maneuver would ever work. In, in the real world, most likely not unless someone just snuck up on someone and, you know, right. the guy's trying to, you know, just uh, now, to be fair, take a gunshot. In the movie, they did not do this. In the movie, it made total sense why they were together. Because remember, so yes. I don't think that dogfight occurred until after they'd stolen a random F-14. Right. Yeah, that's off, right. Yeah. Off the airfield. That's, that's right. Like, yeah, that, that was the most absurd part of the movie, by the way. That was the most absurd? I don't know. Why is it so absurd? Because I thought the Mach 10 ejection. So Iran does have F-14. So now, yeah. now that I'm putting all this together, that actually makes sense. But the the taking off from the taxiway, uh, you know, in, in the 500 feet or whatever they showed. No. The, just no way it's going to happen. I mean, okay, but that and, and every dude on that base would have come and shot him before I'm they so, got okay, hurt. So actually, right? I'm not so sure. I thought I I accepted this part of the movie. Okay, all right. I accepted it. <laughs> I didn't, and here's why. Because I'm okay. like, you've got a kind of a foreign country. It's not, hell, let's forget about being a foreign country. Let's imagine a U.S. base that just dealt with this. Okay. Okay, that just dealt with this major attack. All right. Why can't a few guys just be running around? Because remember, they like they show up yeah, and they're, they're like just, just part of the like, chaos. So bunch of guys, and they're like, "We should run, yeah, let's run." <laughs> and they just start running. And it's like, yeah. I'm not so sure this is so unrealistic. Like the tower's not paying attention at this point. Yeah, that's nobody's sure. paying attention. And anymore. once they're in the cockpit, everyone's going to go, oh, "That's Captain." Yeah, you know, it's something. Uh, okay, they're taking uh, on. Oh, they're going to protect the yeah. plane, or they're going. Like, I don't right, know. Right. Yeah, yeah. No, that's true. Oh, come on, but it makes I, sense. I'll hit. Okay, I'll give them that. I'll, I'll hit the I believe button on that one. But the the takeoff distance was just well, you don't know the distance. You can tell by looking at. There's no way in hell. And Rooster, you know, he's scared. He's, he's, you know, he's a pilot. He's not like his dad. By the way, that's that's the difference. You know, Goose was the the backseater, and yeah. Rooster's now the pilot. Oh, yeah. So, it's, if Rooster's in the backseat, you know, crapping bricks sideways because he doesn't think they're going to be able to get airborne, then yeah. they're probably not going to get airborne. Yeah. I mean, but, it's, but, okay, but Maverick, but who Maverick, was Maverick could. It's do not it. about the plane. That's true. It's about it's the, about pilot. the pilot. That's right. That's, that's true. That was that's one of the themes of the movie. Yeah. That was what they say. That's a good point. All right. So obviously, it's realistic, and you don't know what you're talking about. Clearly. Yep. Um, but they get up there and I guess 
yeah, that is the first time they're in a dogfight, isn't it? Because the rest of the time they were battling. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep. Okay, so yeah, so, they, so this actually this makes and in the and in the first movie, maybe what you're saying about the off, you know, the offsets between yeah. enemy combat. I don't remember. Remember they had to movie. visually identify them. Uh, yeah. That remember the 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 bosses wouldn't let them shoot unless they were shot upon. That's right. So that That's how they that ROE them. the rules of engagement they were forced, handcuffed forced by that. forced them to, to you know okay so be like you instead of you know being able to kill someone from forty feet right. away I've got to actually go up shake their hand first right. and and well, then I mean, them, right? it, obviously the preference is actually we just call an air right, right? yeah you know, stand some like, stand off yeah, there's, there's multiple know. ways to kill somebody <laughs> yes. and um, you know we, we most of the time and I, in Afghanistan uh, especially. It was, you know, air, our air support had visual on somebody setting up on us. And we're just like, okay, just kill them. Right. Just kill them for us. You right. guys have, and they're like, sure. It's like the Indiana Jones scene where the guy's twirling the sword and Indiana just yeah. shoots Yeah, just shoot them. Yeah. All right. Um, because, you know, pictures. they'll, otherwise they'll take pot shots at us. It's difficult to see them. Yeah. You know, it, yeah. I think movies make it seem like you always know where you're getting shot from. And it's just, Correct. it's almost impossible. The um, ones that hit you, as you know, are the ones yeah. you don't see. Yeah. Right? And the ones and that don't show up in your, your electronics and, you know, then you don't see. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. you have some clue, but like the first sound you're hearing is going to be the bullet. Right. As it snaps past your head, which is supersonic. Yeah. yeah. And it's it's not, the movies make it sound like a, kind of like a mosquito. Right. And that's just not how a bullet sounds. It sounds more like a snap. It's like a crack. It's like a whip. Just, like a it's whip. like a whip. Yeah, it's like a whip. yeah. yeah, yeah. And so you hear that first, which which pretty much drowns out the sound of the actual shot from the gun. Yeah. Um, just based on how sound timing, waves move yeah, and timing. Yeah. And so it's difficult to know. I mean, you can yeah. kind of, I mean, if, if they keep doing it, it's usually yeah. you'll figure it out pretty fast. Yeah, that's right. Um, anyway, but uh, <laughs> like, I, oh, I'll give you a, a random Afghanistan story. This one's, I'm not even sure I've ever said this in the podcast. I probably have. But um you know, we were filming one day. Uh, we were just kind of hanging out on a rooftop. Uh, we, were, okay. we were in this. Uh, I guess I should give some background. So, so you know, we had multiple outposts. I would say in Kandahar Province, and we were at one, but for whatever reason, okay. Okay. Uh, a lot of our guys who were who were kind of moving through a village, some you know, some distance away, they found a bunch of IEDs as we always did. And then the, the procedure after that is to just blow them up, right? We're okay. not like, we might keep them, we might keep some materials from there to like fingerprint them and try to like eventually catch the guys in the system right. building right. and stuff. But um, for the most part, the safest thing to do is blow these things up, get them up, get them out of the ground and blow them up. Um, blow them up in the ground in, in, in is a better option uh, oftentimes. But, you know, you only have so many explosives, so you can't just blow them all up. Right. And so you collect them and put them in a pile and blow them up. And it's really fun to film this when you're doing it because what, why, when is it not fun to film an explosion? Right. And me and my buddy, uh, we, we weren't on the ground with them. We were in the background, but we were filming what we knew was about to be what's called a BIP, which is a BIP blow in place. And um, have the camera out. And we're like, oh, this is going to be so cool. Like, there's going to be us in this background. It's going to be an explosion. And then it, we're not exactly sure when they're doing it. We kind of have an idea. And then it happens and we both kind of jump. Okay. And I was like, well, now I can't ever show anyone this video because I jumped. I don't yeah, no, cool. yeah, it's like it is. But like it. And we're like, why did we jump? It wasn't like a loud explosion. It wasn't, it was kind of far away. We watched the video later. We were getting shot at. Oh, no kidding. Wow. As soon as, Holy like, crap. I don't know how it was timed so perfectly with the explosion, but you can see the, the bullets impacting right next to wow. us on a roof. We were just lucky because what they're holy because crap. You're probably getting shot at by some guys who are not they're they're not your like high level fighters. Right. So their SOP, standard operating procedure, is to basically shoot at you and run. Right. Which is right. basically what they did. Because they're expecting us to just launch right back. They have no them. idea you guys are shooting. Yeah, they have no shooting. idea we're just like shooting the shit and like oh, <laughs> shoot videos. And, yeah. yeah. And maybe the explosion they weren't expecting that explosion. Yeah. There's no way they timed it that perfectly. I think it was just God being like Let's just try and save you idiots. Because <laughs> you're a bunch literally of your warning shot. Like literally, you're shot across the bow from God. There's another crazy story. This guy I was with at that moment, a few weeks later, also standing on a rooftop, got shot by the exact oh same God. kind of SOP. Um, if he died, I would I would not probably tell the story right, right, yeah. in a funny way. Okay. But it is funny. Thanks for telling me that. I'm sure <laughs> yeah. smile. No, 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 don't worry, man. It's, it's going to be dark. No. no, this is hilarious. Okay. I got shot right in the neck. It was hilarious. <laughs> I'm not joking. I'm like, well, I am joking. I feel like you trapped me in that one. No, no, no. He got shot right in the neck. And um, oh it just God. happened in a way that he had a sore throat. 
That was that was, that was it? the extent of his uh, AK forty seven round right through the neck from Holy left crap. to right behind his windpipe went behind his it didn't like cruise by it, just graze him it went through his through and through I know oh two God. guys on this deployment were shot directly through the neck and were totally fine Wow weird it's like again it's like you don't ever we called question him, we called him the alley cat because he had nine lives yeah he also had you don't ever question another point in that deployment he should have died so many times right I'm the one who gets blown up. <laughs> Right, and then yeah. at another point, he sat on a twenty-pound IED, set it off, um, but it went low order, which means like the uh, the fuse the, hit, yeah, yeah, but it didn't just, go, it, just it didn't hit the, the, the detonator, detonator went off, yeah, but it yeah. didn't blow the main charge. Oh my god! So they heard something. They're like, "What the hell is that?" And then they dig it up later, and it was like twenty pounds of explosives. That didn't it's got like off. a charred what ass uh, burning would have, through the vaporized them. Oh my god! There's a couple people there. Take him to Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? Jeez. Yeah. Good lord. Oh, it was just wild times. Um, so, anyway. Back to pilot stuff. Um, that's what happens when you don't have pilots helping you out. Yeah, you know? no, yeah, you sorry. Some air support. Sorry, you had the you wrong guys overhead, yeah. Um, all right, what else in our, in our limited time? Um, okay, so you got an interview to do. So, I think we hit most of it. Yeah. Honestly. I think that was... Uh, I will say, you know, the, the movie was excellent. Um because you can make a, as cool as the job is, you can make a bad naval aviator. I mean, we, they shot behind enemy lines. The movie, remember, the, to Owen Wilson or Luke Wilson, one of them. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was that was absurd. Broken nose guys. Yeah, yeah. They, <laughs> we, our, guys. our our squadron was the one that filmed that, and uh, in Lemoore, and so we were all excited. I don't remember when this was, like two thousand two, two thousand four, yeah. or somewhere. You know, it was like, like Tears of the Sun two. It was terrible, just terrible. Yeah. And you're Tears so of the excited. Sun one was pretty cool, right? But the, yeah, and then they, you kinda, Sun two got weird. They're just trying to make the money. So you you go you know you go to the movies and you're expecting, hey, this is the next Top Gun. Yeah. And you watch it, and you're just embarrassed, right? Wow. So I was afraid that this you know Top Gun two or Maverick was going to be that, but. They did a good job. They they, they did it. They did job. it right. It's just entertaining. I mean, like it is what it's supposed to be. It's like Correct. Yeah. realistic enough, and it is inspiring. I mean, you look at you look at what's going on in the world right now, and that was maybe one of the few moments this year where we went to the movies and there were there were no politics involved. Mm-hmm. We, we all walked out with a pride of country. You know, everyone loves naval aviators, so we already had that, but. Uh, this reaffirmed that you know right. that love of naval. It was such a strong message to Hollywood too. Like there's a, there's a thing that works. Correct. Give yeah. us movies that we like. Um, yeah. That, yeah. that are yeah. like fun and, and don't beat us over the head. Like, with there, there's the, there's a formula here, guys. This isn't rocket science. Right. Just there's a formula that works. Right. Right. And um, you know, so, it's just yeah. not the stuff that wins the Oscars, but. Yeah, no, that's, that's good. Right. I, I have no. a lot more questions I want to ask you about. All right, we'll do another policy one with stuff, the, but we yeah. can get that later. Some, some DOD, yeah, some, making the DOD better. We were talking yeah, about we got so much this. room for opportunity within the DOD, and the bill we just voted on, the last one we voted on, was the Military Spouse uh, Reciprocity Act, which guys like you and I know what this is, but it's this allows spouses of active duty members, whether they're a doctor, nurse, real estate agent, you know, cosmetologist, beautician. Uh, if they get orders from, say, Virginia Beach to, you know, California, the, the spouse can use that license in the new state without right. having to requalify. Uh, so that's thousands of dollars and, you know, up to a year to requalify in the profession. So we got that passed. The Senate passed it. The president's going to sign into law here shortly. So that's a big deal for, you know, we talk about the military and, and the sacrifices they make. And some of these things are actually solvable problems. Yeah. The, the pay sucks. The quality of life's not great. We can... We can actually solve some of those problems uh, in, as members of Congress. Yeah, so. Just make it a little better. Um, the, 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 unfortunately, the Senate did not take up really any of our amendments to the NDAA for the most part. Correct. Because yeah, um, yeah. what you're talking about was in a VA was in a, was VA, a VA bill. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I had, I had a lot of stuff in. that the House passed. The House did its job actually. Yeah, we worked together pretty well in the NDAA when, it, when it's all said and done. Um, there's a proper process for it. The Senate just doesn't even do it. So it's like that. No, yeah. I didn't even have a senator to lobby for for our, which what I think really helped um, active duty. I was I was what well, my amendment was was kind of a crazy one, but um, uh, asking the DoD to do clinical trials on psychedelics oh, for, right, PT, right. for PTSD yeah. treatment, good. which you know uh, I was just a bit amazed in the last couple of years how many good friends of mine have done this instead of changed their lives, like save, really? save their lives. Really, um, it's kind of wild. Is it like one and one and done kind of fix, or do they have to keep doing the therapy? A lot of them are doing yeah. is a one and done fix. It wow. is a, it That's is, wild. It is a specific clinic in Mexico run by Americans and American doctors. Um, they okay. just have to do it in Mexico for legal reasons, and well known. Um, hmm. I, I, you know, there's there's uh, nonprofit funding that's getting these guys down there. No kidding. Okay. And um, 
just doing amazing things and it's it's not a good experience like it's it, yeah, so, yeah so it's not addictive because it's a horrible experience right. you never want to do this but it's like control alt deleting your mind yep. and resetting everything basically it's kind of how they yeah. describe it yeah um hmm. that's but great no we did not get that through unfortunately we're going to keep trying for next year because it's a very bipartisan issue yeah. so that's good one of many things um that we'd like to do for me let's have another discussion at a future date on yeah uh, we'll talk policy how to, fi- how to fix dod contracting yep the military industrial complex, what's real and what isn't. Uh, yep. Cause you got some interesting background and knowledge on these particular subjects. And I do know for sure that what people say, especially in our, on our own side, um, especially, you know, this kind of populist, right. Is do they have it completely backwards? Yeah. I like, get everything they think about the military industrial complex or foreign policy. Right. The truth is literally the opposite. It's literally the opposite. Like, um, like many things. Right. And yeah. So let's have that. Let's have that conversation. Cause, uh, it's a longer one. You got an interview. Uh, there's a lot of like a lot of facets to that, but yeah, we 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 should. I mean, the bottom line is, you know, when we pass a budget that's 750 billion dollars or 850 billion, whatever the number is, it's 850 this year, right? Mm-hmm. Big number. Uh, it doesn't behave like 850 billion. It behaves yeah. like you know 700 or 650, right? right? So we, we've got to waste. figure out these efficiencies, and it's not just it's how we contract. Uh, when you ask the Pentagon, they throw Boeing and Lockheed under the bus, and when you ask Lockheed and Boeing, they throw the Pentagon under the bus, and it's a little bit of all of those things. Yeah. But it's it's the way our government buys stuff. You, mm-hmm. you see how dysfunctional we are in mm-hmm. Congress. Pentag- the Pentagon is exponentially more dysfunctional and right. more bureaucratic. It's a giant bureaucracy. And, and so it, 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 you you. At, you Enlarge in any bureaucracy, it will get to this difficult point. Right. Yep. And it becomes this question of like, do, do you empower a solid, creative individual to use their judgment to make the right choice? You could. Right. But how do you oversee that? Right. They, and, they and, have and a so, zero risk mentality when it comes to stuff Exactly. Like that. Yep. So any bureaucracy is, going to, it, bureaucracy is going to say, no, we can't because, right. because Congress will be mad at us. And it's true. We would. Right. And yeah, so, right. like, I get it, right? Yeah, I get the, right. I get the, the it's all behavior culture. that's been trained, right? right. And yeah. so, I understand yeah. that the, the 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 incentive structures here and why it's a zero risk kind of behavior. But in any case, we've got to find that happy medium because we're yeah. not in a happy medium right yeah. now. We'll, we'll, have we'll that, talk uh, about that. Yeah, we'll have that conversation another time. Mike, Sounds Christina, good. Everyone. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate it, brother. Congressman from uh, wait, what's the district? Number? California. Going to be twenty seven. Was twenty five. California okay. twenty seven now. So yeah. All right. It's exciting times. Big winner in a tough election. Tough, uh, tough blue seat. district. 29% yeah. Republican in my district, if you wow. can believe it. Uh, and Biden won that district by how much? 13%. Yeah, so, but you yeah. crushed it. So we did well. So well, congratulations. Informed voters. So thank you, Dan. Thanks for everything you do, brother. All right. All right. Thanks. Good avenue. All right. Thanks. Good avenue. All right. Thanks. Good avenue. All right. Thanks. Good avenue.